Republican on the Armed Services Committee, of course, and the Intelligence Committee as well. Also a veteran of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Senator, good morning to you. Welcome to the program today. Good, good morning, Martha. Let, let me get your initial take uh, on this deal as you look over it. And I know you've had some more time now to, to read it. And I understand you've read the entire, um, the entire deal. What, what's the headline to you? What do you take away? I have read the entire agreement now, Martha, and unfortunately it's not as bad as we had feared. It's actually much worse. Um, remember, Iran is a terror-sponsoring, anti-American outlaw regime, and we're going to let them keep their nuclear program largely intact. In some ways, we're even going to cooperate with them to advance their nuclear program beyond where it is now. In the meantime, they're going to get $150 billion in sanctions relief. We're even going to lift the conventional arms embargo at a time when they are still the world's worst state sponsor of terrorism and they're destabilizing the entire Middle East. Yeah. You know, one thing that's, that's hard to understand when you look through this deal is the acceptance that, yes, you know, the negotiators understood that Iran would like to have a peaceful nuclear energy entity in their country and that there needed to be an effort to kind of help them establish that. And really no discussion about the fact that they have plenty of resources for energy and, and many question why they would ever need any nuclear energy plan or program in their country. That's right, Martha. Uh, Iran is the only country in the region that sits uh, across both the Persian Gulf oil fields and the Caspian Sea oil fields. Or you could look at it in another direction when you want to refute the claims of peaceful nature of their nuclear program. They built an underground fortified military bunker outside Fordo where they have centrifuges. As President Obama himself has said, you don't need an underground fortified bunker if you have peaceful intent for your nuclear program. Yeah. Hard to wrap your brain around uh, in so many ways in terms of the, the tenets of this deal. Uh, because you are an Iraq uh, and Afghanistan war veteran, and because I am sure that you lost uh, fellow soldiers to these IEDs that were planted all over uh, these war territories, Soleimani, the head of the Quds Force, is on the very lengthy list of people and companies and entities of those who are being delisted in these sanctions. And I want to read um, a piece from a New Yorker story that ran in 2013 that I think nicely explains to everybody what he is all about. It says he has sought to reshape the Middle East in Iran's favor, working as a power broker and as a military force, assassinating rivals, arming allies, and for most of a decade, directing a network of militant groups that killed hundreds of Americans in Iraq. The U.S. Department of the Treasury has sanctioned Soleimani for his role in supporting the Assad regime for abetting terrorism. Soleimani is the single most powerful operative in the Middle East today, and yet we are giving him sanctions relief. Why? Martha, all those state statements are true. If Iran is an outlaw regime, the Revolutionary Guard Corps and the Quds Force are their shock troops, and Qasem Soleimani is their commander. He is a great force of instability and evil in the Middle East. And as you said, he and the Quds Force are responsible for the deaths of hundreds of American soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan. And he is now apparently going to receive sanctions relief from both the European Union and the United Nations. And the Revolutionary Guard Corps and the Quds Force, which he commands, is going to receive nearly across the board sanctions relief. I'm sure this was a demand of the Iranian regime. I have no idea why the West would have agreed to this at a time when he is still showing up in Syria and Iraq, still supporting Hezbollah in Lebanon and the Houthis in Yemen, running social media campaigns showing how he's going to be the great defender of the, Shuni, uh, the Shiite confession throughout the Middle East. I think this is madness. Yeah. Um, he, when we talk about the expansion of the military influence in the Middle East, this is the man who is leading that military expansion in the Middle East, as you uh, accurately point out, Senator. Let's talk a little bit about the politics here, because you've got 60 days to do this deal with your fellow senators. What's the outcome going to be? The president has made it very clear uh, that he will try to override any opposition to this in, on Capitol Hill. Martha, I believe the American people will repudiate this agreement as they learn more about it, and Congress will therefore kill the deal. Remember, this is not any old vote. This is not even like a big vote on something like taxes or the debt ceiling, where it's debated for one election and then it's behind you. Any congressman or senator, Democrat or Republican, who votes for this deal is putting his or her political fate in the hands of the Ayatollahs for the rest of time because if Iran detonates a nuclear weapon, whether next year 
or in the next decade, the American people are want to, going to want to know who's responsible for it and to hold them accountable. That's why I think as more details become public, you'll see Congress kill this deal. We'll see. Uh, we will say the president only needs 34 votes in the Senate in favor of this deal, uh, and he seems to be pretty confident that he's going to get them. Senator, thank you very much. Good to speak with you this morning. Thank you, Martha.